locate, is there anywhere in your body that you're holding the stress? That panic, that depression, that anxiety, it might be in your head, maybe your shoulders, your lower back. And you can even give yourself a, a self massage, like a lot of us hold it in our neck and in our shoulders, right? Or you let you get in that shower, let the water hit whatever part of your body that you're holding that tension in and give yourself kind of permission to let go. And then you want to be able uh, to uh, communicate and to connect uh, with yourself. And so what images do you need that will help you to calm uh, yourself and to communicate what you're feeling? So that's why it's important that you have someone you can be honest with. Some of you who are on here are the strong one in your family, the strong one in the church, but everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs somebody. And so who are the people you can tell the truth about how you're feeling and then uh, you can breathe and really give yourself permission to release, to not hold it. Because some of us have been holding things for years and it really is time that we center in and let some of that stress be released from your body. One way to release it from your body is also walking stretching, praise dancing, shouting, okay? <laughs> Put on some music and shout, so you can shout it out, amen. And so uh, mindfulness is being in the present moment on purpose. Let me say it again. Mindfulness is choosing to be in the present. So some of us are stuck in regrets of the past and some of us are stuck in worries for the future, but I choose to be in the present, right? I choose to be in the present. And so that's what you want to actively do. That's why the Lord's prayer says our daily bread, right? I'm not going to keep going on and on about yesterday's bread or tomorrow's bread, but our daily bread. God, meet me in my present moment. And then there are other ways for us to cope and heal. Journaling can be very healing and therapeutic. And so I invite you uh, during this time to think about ordering a journal online, or you can just write on blank sheets of paper in your phone. There's a note area where you can take notes to yourself. Some of you don't like to write. And on your phone, there's a place for audio recording. So you can just talk your reflection for the day. At the end of each day, I have my children tell me what was the best part of their day and what's the worst part of their day. And I tell them mine too, because sometimes we have to lead by example to let our children know that it's okay to talk about whatever is on their minds, amen? The aggressive arts are great for healing, dance, poetry, visual arts. Some of you say, I'm not artsy, but your hair is your art. Some of you like to decorate your home and that's your art. Some of you, the way you cook and fix that plate, that's your art. And so your creativity can be a way of honoring and affirming your humanity and being present in the moment. Gardening, if you can garden, that's a beautiful way to heal and restore. And I know that you all are on the East Coast and it's cold, but if you have some plants in your house, then that can be a way also of healing and restoring. Our spiritual practices are a part of our restoration and it does not have to be complicated prayers but it needs to be honest prayers. Let me say it again. Your prayer life when you're stressed does not need to be complicated. It just needs to be honest. So if as God, I'm overwhelmed. God, I'm tired. God, I can't take it anymore. God, you're gonna have to do this. I don't know what to do. Tell God the truth, amen? And even those of you who are frustrated, angry, and have some questions for God, God is not insecure nor intimidated. So you can tell God how you really feel about whatever it is you feel, amen? People are sometimey. They don't, they don't wanna hear bad feedback, but whatever is on your heart and your mind, God is big enough to hear it, amen? And then we wanna not only think about our prayer, but getting into the word and put situating yourself within the story so that you can be healed and restored. Our relationships are healing. Self-help books can be important for healing. So there's a publisher called New Harbinger Press. If someone can put it in the chat box, Harbinger, H-A-R-B-I-N-G-R. New Harbinger Press has self-help books on every topic, amen? So I encourage you to, to go to therapy. If you don't wanna do that, then at least get yourself a self-help book, amen? 
And then we can do music, aromatherapy, going for a walk, drinking water, meditation. And I want you to know it's a lie that meditation is antichrist, right? Some people try to say it's new age. Meditation is being still and silent. And so many of us are used to in our prayers doing all the talking, but the reality is that uh, God wants us to listen. God wants us to be still and silent and know that God is God. So I invite you to expand your prayer life for it not just to be a list of your requests, but for you to be still in the presence of God and allow God to minister to you. The Abide app is a Christian app for meditation. And there's an app called Shine, uh, which is designed by Black people. And it has meditation specifically to some of the issues that we deal with. So liberation, and then this is my closing point, God doesn't just want us to cope with our stress. God wants us to be free. So now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And then in Isaiah, we hear the words that later are echoed by Jesus, that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. And so we are to come with good news. We are to come and bind up the brokenhearted, and we are to come to proclaim freedom for those who are bound. And so God says, when we think about liberation, I don't just want you to be in survival mode. I want you to thrive. I want you to flourish. I want you to have the fullness of life. And so a part of that is resisting racism, resisting the stress, fighting back against everything that tells you that you are less. And so how do I affirm my humanity and resist all of this stress and trauma? I can resist by resting. I can resist by having joy. I can resist by being loving. I can resist by making up in my mind that the cycles I have lived through, I don't want to repeat that I am going to do it differently, even if I'm the first one in my family, that I am going to do it differently. And that is the way in which we resist. And so on today, before I take your questions, I just want to pray over you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that God would minister to the very points of your stress in your body, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, that you would feel the very presence of the Holy Spirit and know that you are not in it by yourself. I'm praying for relief from the despair, from the worry, from the overwhelm, from the depression. I am praying that even now you would be aware of God's unfailing love for you, that God would restore you and liberate you so that you can be everything you were born to be, nothing less. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And I can take a couple of your questions. Hallelujah. You can either unmute your microphone or you can put it in the chat box. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Tama, tonight for uh, your extraordinary gift. And we honor God for you tonight. You've helped Amen. a lot of us tonight. You've helped a lot of us, including me. Amen. You've helped us tonight. Uh, please put, as you all know, we put our uh, questions in the chat box. Um, please put your questions in the chat. If you are on social media, uh, we have persons watching social media, and I see so many of you all are on there tonight. Put your questions in social media. We have persons watching there tonight. Uh, if you put your questions, um, we can get right to it tonight. We only have about five minutes uh, for questions. I do uh, want to welcome um, Episcopal Supervisor, uh, Dr. Rosalind Brookins. I uh, heard Dr. Tamer mention her and she's on with us tonight. Uh, her husband, uh, Bishop Brookins, uh, was one of the trailblazers of African Methodism. Um, and so we bless the name of the Lord for uh, Dr. Rosalind Brookins tonight, Supervisor Dr. Rosalind Brookins. And if her camera comes on, tech team, would you all look for Rosalind Brookins uh, while we're waiting on questions? 
I know you all have gotten a lot tonight, um, and, and you, you know Pastor uh, uh, don't mind uh, getting on my soapbox, you know, because I, I preach to you all all the time about therapists and, and getting you a, a good psychologist or therapist and, and going to, I mean, there's nothing uh, more refreshing than sitting on that sofa. I'm telling you now, uh, yeah. it, it, it'll do what, what he and Jack Daniels can't do. Amen. Uh, it, it'll do what the mall can't do. I'm Amen. telling you, there's nothing like it. And I, I believe in promoting it. I have access to it uh, because of what I see every day as a member of the state parole board uh, and the uh, heinous crimes and murders and the way that they all uh, play out. So we have to get our head checked because uh, it, it messes us up in order for us to be whole. All right, Melissa or Nicole, you all have questions. Do y'all have questions to read to Dr. Tamer yet? Any questions? No, Pastor, no questions. I saw a question about child trauma. Okay. Let me see if I can go back. Somebody asked. Um, what happens if you have child, oh, I'm sorry, it was a direct message. That's why you couldn't see it. Um, what happens if you have childhood trauma from therapy itself? What would be good? Because there may be a negative connotation to it. Thank you so much. Great question. And I would say whether as a child or an adult that some people have gone to a therapist and it wasn't a match or the therapist said or did something that was insensitive and so I would say it's important to think about therapy the same way you think about finding the right school for your child or finding the right church for you, that I think many of us can testify that we have been to a church where a pastor said something that was off the wall. And that's where some people will say, well, I'll never go to church again. <laughs> and so I encourage you, even though it was painful um, to really know that not all therapists are created equally and they don't all function in the same way. And so to think about that first session as kind of a trial period to see, do I feel comfortable with this person? Do I feel like they get me? And uh, if they don't, then I don't have to stay there. I had uh, somebody in uh, 2020 when all the race riots were going um, a good friend was in therapy and her therapist was white and they had been doing good work together and she found it very helpful. But then when all of the stuff was happening, she just really felt like she wanted to talk to a black therapist and she felt bad because the person had been helping her. I'm like, you, you are not obligated to stay there. So the work you did with them was helpful. If you're ready to switch to someone else, because this is what you want to talk about now to give yourself space and permission um, that is, it's not like I hear men talk about your barber, right? You can't cheat on your barber with a new barber <laughs> or with a new hairstylist. If the therapy isn't working for you, you can definitely switch somebody else. Okay, Dr. Tamer, there's a question. Uh, what would you recommend from, uh, for college age students that are struggling with uprooting of the COVID crisis? Absolutely, such a, a great, point and such a hard piece. One, I would really encourage connecting with the Campus Counseling Center because most campuses give you a certain number of sessions for free just as a student. Usually it's like eight. And so uh, you, I would reach out to them and the sessions are virtual. So even if you're not on campus right now, um, they should still be open and able to connect with you and provide support. And then I would say to not play down your symptoms. And what I mean by that is sometimes culturally, we like to present like we have it all together. But if we do that, when you're trying to connect with a therapist, they may prioritize people who are in more distress, but you're in a lot of distress, but you may be presenting it like everything is fine, right? So when you reach out, whether to a therapist in your community or back on the campus, when they do that initial interview, you want to really express whatever it is you have been feeling or struggling with. And then I also want to just uh, let you know it is understandable 
because you know when you dreamed about your college years this wasn't the picture right and so it, it is personal that other people you know got to have a different experience and so there is a grief there's something called uh, unacknowledged grief so grieving the things that people don't really notice so some people are grieving that they didn't have a prom or didn't have a graduation or haven't had like a real college experience there that's a loss that's a loss and you don't have to feel ashamed about feeling bad about that. And then at the same time, what I tell people is, is it, make plans for after COVID so that gives you hope for the future, but also think about what are some things I can enjoy in the now, right? Uh, while, I'm, while I'm waiting for outside to open up, what are some things that I can do that I like that will be enjoyable and yet safe? All right, Dr. Tama, I know your time is precious. We have so many. They're asking, do you have virtual sessions? If you can address that, I'm just going to give them all to you now. Do you have virtual sessions? Another person is asking about COVID-related death. I'm sure people are dealing with that. Sister in love dealing with the loss of a brother. People are dealing with loss of parents and loss of all kinds of loved ones. And then the last one, if you are the matriarch of the family uh, and you're tired of being drained by your loved one's problems, but you know they need you, how do you deal with that? And we'll yes. pick it up after that. Okay, Thank great. You. Uh, so for me personally, my practice is actually full. Um, and so I've had to refer out. Additionally, my license, usually people are licensed by their state. So I'm only licensed to accept clients in California. So mm -hmm. you would need someone who's licensed in New Jersey. You can look up therapyforblackgirls.com, even though it says black girls, it's black people. Um, and uh, if you want a black therapist in particular, if, you're, if that's not uh, your preference, then APA, sorry, locator.apa.org is the American Psychological Association. And you just put in your zip code and you'll see what insurance the person takes and what their expertise is. Um, and all therapists right now are providing sessions online. It's all phone or virtual, which helps you not to have to fight traffic, not to have to worry about the snow. You can still get your session. Um, then uh, somebody asked about if you're the matriarch. Um, it is important to set boundaries. And sometimes we have, <laughs> Sister Barbara said she's moving to Cali. All right, I'll see you here. <laughs> um, uh, we have to set boundaries and delegate. We can sometimes have, actually they have a syndrome that's been written about for black women in particular called the superwoman syndrome. And with the superwoman syndrome, we take care of everybody else but neglect ourselves. And so it is important if you are the matriarch to not take on this idea that of a mini messiah, right? Because sometimes we can get our ego invested in that of like, if it wasn't for me, the family would fall apart. If it wasn't for me, the church would fall apart. If it wasn't for me, for, but if we keep doing that, then we are not training up other people to do what we do, right? So then, you know, the missionaries or the whoever can be, can like uh, not cultivate gift in our younger people. So I had a sister out here in Los Angeles, who it was two years ago. She said, I'm not making Easter uh, dinner because everybody is late and they always complain. <laughs> so yeah. no, they, it was no Easter dinner, but I tell you what, she took a year off and the next year they acted right. They came on time, they asked if they could help. <laughs> so sometimes you have to either delegate or set some boundaries because else people will take advantage and not really, their people will take you for granted. And so um, the only way to stop doing everything is stop doing everything. Some people will step up and some things might fall through the cracks, but sometimes some things need to fall through the cracks at least for a season because uh, your health, your mental health is important. Uh, somebody also asked about COVID grief and stress. And let me say, it's been especially hard to grieve because of the loss of not having the full funeral service. While you know the funeral didn't fix everything, it was healing for us to be able to gather and have the repast and tell stories. And so, you know, we've, we've been created with trying to create it, with trying to stream services and that kind of thing. But some people feel disappointed that they couldn't give their loved ones the, the tribute that they would have wanted to. And so um, to give yourself space and permission 
to grieve that both the loss of the person, maybe also the way in which they died and the ways in which uh, the services could or could not happen. Um, and then someone is asking if you all could type what I said in the chat about therapyforblackgirls.com uh, and locator.apa.org, okay? Um, somebody asked from Facebook uh, about triggers for PTSD. So PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder and a trigger is something that reminds you of the trauma. And so it can be really overwhelming if you have not identified what your triggers are yet. So you want to, if you feel yourself feeling unsafe suddenly, you wanna get a sense of like what is happening in the moment. So I'll give you an example. Um, there was a, a older gentleman now, he's uh, an elder, but when he was young, um, he was uh, sexually assaulted in a park and it was right after it rained. So the smell of fresh rain on grass is a trigger for him, right? It's like years, years, decades later. But if he smells that, it puts him back in that place. For some of you, if you were abused, it may be the cologne that the person wore. So you wanna figure out what those triggers are so then I can begin to give myself the message, I'm in the present. And so we do something called grounding. And to ground yourself, you say, what are four things I see? You know, so that you're not in the past. Look around your room. You know, I see you all. I see Pastor Slaughter. I see the Zoom Live button. I see the time, right? I see all that. And then you notice, what do I feel on my body? So I feel the chair holding me up. I feel the floor underneath my feet. I feel my jacket on my shoulders. I feel my glasses on my face, right? And then what do I smell? I was burning a pumpkin candle earlier. I can smell pumpkin, right? Uh, and what do I hear? I hear the sound of my own voice. If I was really quiet, maybe I could hear a clock, right? And so grounding helps you to enter the present instead of staying stuck in the past. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. What a phenomenal, phenomenal um, presentation tonight. And we're so grateful. Uh, one of the questions I ask um, inmates that are up for parole, what are your triggers? Yes, you know yes. Trigger that can cause you to come back into yes. this same place that you are trying to right. appeal to me to get out of. What is That's your right. and you'll be amazed when they start yeah. what those triggers are and the abuse that many of them have been through. So now right. they commit abuse because yes. that's what was done to them. Uh, yeah. So thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 lastly, we got to go. Um, <laughs> my kids tell me all the time. Uh, my wife really, I think, you know, kind of programmed them and said, they say, Daddy, uh, especially a teenager now, the 16 year old next month, you go from zero to 10. Over, over little stuff, zero to 10. And so uh, during COVID, I, and, and I do, because I'm, I'm headstrong emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, and all that stuff. And when I started walking, that, when you started saying mm -hmm. coping, and I started walking, and now yeah. in COVID setting yeah. boundaries, and in the shower, it's always been my neck and my back area. And, and started paying yes. attention to that, feel like a whole new yes. fella and even lost weight in the process. I say so to God be the glory uh, for the great thing. Amen. And thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing that testimony. I just think it's so important because sometimes we'll say that's just how I am, right? Mm -hmm. But you named I'm headstrong, but then you said, and then I figured out something to do about it, right? And so you started walking and with God's grace, you saw it improve. So I wanna just encourage everyone you know, if people give you feedback, don't just go into that's just me, right? And so one of the affirmations that's really good to say is up until now, blah, 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 but from this point forward, blah, 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 right? So up until now, I've been explosive or short-tempered, but from this point forward, I walk in the grace of God, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, God bless everybody tonight. Thank you all. It is 8.04. It is 5.04 out on the West Coast with Dr. Tamer. She's given us an hour of her time and we're so appreciative. And she's already prayed over us. She's already Amen. blessed us tonight. And so Amen. we're grateful for her and all of the stuff, information that's in the chat uh, so that everybody can use it as a resource. Once again, uh, we're grateful this month. That's what we'll be doing every Wednesday. Um, she's given us so many scriptures that the pastor can go and properly exegete uh, that text and use yes. some of those texts 
uh, throughout this month. That's I know right. it's Black History Month, and that's why we picked Black History Month to deal with our mental health, which we have not Amen. come in our in our race, especially in the Black church. So thank you, Dr. Bryant. I won't call everybody names. Thank tonight. you. Hundreds of y'all. Thank you. Love y'all. Love you. And uh, I see my family. family. Thank y'all right. for being here. My aunt is here. My cousin's here. My brother was here. <laughs> my oh, mama was here. Love awesome. y'all. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And of course, uh, the eminent pastor of New Birth, if he was here, uh, glad to have you. Jamal. Amen. Glad to have you, brother. Uh, All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All have a good night. Pastor, love you. Have a, have good, a good night. Have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. Have a great night. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Good night, everybody.